So um, the original topic, as people mentioned uh, before, this meeting was supposed to, what started out as climate shifts. And uh, when I was asked to participate, I said, oh, I don't know anything about climate shifts. So that'll be interesting. And then I was assigned this talk. So now I have to learn a little about, about climate shifts. So this will not be my work. This is a review of what I've found about climate shifts, what I think I know now. So how does this? Ah. Yeah. So uh, what I did is I, uh, me and my uh, graduate student, Zayu Wang, who's working actually on Pacemaker, we said, oh, we better look at this. And we did what's called these days research. <laughs> online to, to survey the literature for this talk. So we did Google Scholar searches on things like climate shift, which had remarkably few, uh, you know, exact phrase, climate shift, practically very few papers came up. Uh, and we were more successful. We said, well, we can't just talk about climate shift. It has to be expanded a little. So we looked for uh, regime shift and so forth. So this is what, uh, we came up with. Well, first I thought it'd be good to give my kind of personal view of some of the concepts involved. Climate, to me, is the statistics of the instantaneous weather variables. Climate variability then is changes in those statistics. So changes in the mean, changes in variance, frequency, correlation, any statistic you can think of, that's climate change or climate variability. And provisionally, climate shift then is a change in the statistics that persists for a much longer time than the transition between the two states. So it's a, it's a kind of climate variability. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of the papers, or a lot of the few papers we discovered, people use climate shift uh, as equivalent to a change in sign of some index, like Atlantic multi-decadal variability or Pacific decadal variability or net top of the atmosphere heat flux, certainly a change in you know, Sahel precipitation index would be very important, a change in sign and so forth. Um, okay, and so what about climate versus weather? So weather is, is the instantaneous values of the weather variables. And so climate is a lagging indica indicator, like if you were betting on you know, stocks, a lagging indicator would be something that's already happened and is not that interesting. In fact, you don't know what the current climate is until it's the past climate, really. So in order to, for example, uh, climate prediction versus weather prediction, you have to wait 10 years to verify a decadal climate prediction. Something might happen in the last of the 10 years if you're looking at the mean over the 10 years or whatever. Uh, whereas a weather prediction you verify against ins instantaneous data. So there's some kind of philosophical issues in, in climate prediction that maybe will be touched on later. Uh, for example, uh, an ENSO prediction, a seasonal prediction of ENSO, to me is a weather prediction for SST. Now, you might not have to know the atmospheric evolution exactly, but you do want to know the exact evolution of the ocean temperature. Uh, whereas a seasonal hurricane forecast is a climate prediction. You want to know some number of hurricanes or something like that over the season. Uh, so then we come to climate regimes. So climate, re climate shifts are related to climate regimes, and effectively these terms are used interchangeably. So regimes are distinct climates, and they're motivated, I think, by the three variable nonlinear Lorentz attractor model. Uh, I'll show you a, a schematic in a second. And the regimes are, are regions, like the circles of those two donuts, they're regions surrounding those empty spaces in the middle. The empty spaces are some kind of, you know, this is a very mathematical model. Uh, unsta uh, unstable fixed points, and then as you're climate, which is a point that moves around in this space as it goes from one donut to the other, it switches regimes, uh, and 
there's a transition between, between the regimes, and if it, if it stays in one place for a long time versus another, that's a climate shift. Uh, here's another view of what a, a climate shift is. Uh, so this is uh, what's called a hysteresis diagram. On the vertical axis is, um, let's say, the forcing or, or the response, say, of, of the system, so like global temperature or something like that. And the horizontal axis is some measure of the forcing. So as the forcing increases to the right and you start on the lower curve, you reach some point and you jump up to the upper curve when the forcing gets strong enough, and that's a rapid transition that you could interpret as a climate shift. On the other hand, when you decrease the forcing, it'll follow the upper curve and then kind of fall off a cliff to the lower curve. So that's a hysteresis uh, that occurs in these kind of nonlinear Lorentz type models when you have a uh, response to a change in external forcing. Uh, and then if you have some noise on top of it, you can induce these shifts uh, to occur, not just at those cliffs, but in some region around them. So in reality, uh, there are climate shifts, but this is a picture of uh, over 40,000 years of some climate data. And you can see in the various curves, this is 40,000 years on the left to, to current on the right, uh, various quantities from, from ice cores. Uh, say, say, look at the top one, there's a, a time of strong variability, but not much, say, trend. And then all of a sudden, there's a trend around 10,000 years ago when, say, the ice sheet melts. And then you get to the upper part where there's no trend again, but the variability is much reduced. So I don't know, you know what. I'm not interpreting these, but I'm just saying when we look at these climate time, time series, you can see various kinds of, of shifts, climate shifts, when you look at them. And uh, at the bottom, you see a, a change in the trend and then a shift between no trend, and then trend, and then no trend, for example. So what about some more relevant things for us here uh, in terms of decadal prediction? Well, I did realize that this is 2015, which is 20 years of Clivar, basically. And back in 20 years ago, I remember the things we were talking about were PDO or PDV, AMV, global mean temperature, and so forth. And so the things that luckily, I'm talking about the same things here today, but we have 20 years more data. So this is a picture. The time series is the time series of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation up to 2000, from 1900 to 2000. Uh, the SST pattern on the left here, I can't, uh, you see there's a, a horseshoe type pattern in the, in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, where there's one sign along the equator and then opposite sign uh, in the extra tropics in the Pacific. And this is the positive phase, so warm in the equator, I suppose. And you see in the time series, there's obvious decadal or multi-decadal variability in this time series. But, uh, and maybe, maybe there's evidence of climate shifts, but I think it's, it's easier to think of this as just uh, decadal variability. Here's a longer time series of the PDV or PDO. Uh, and at the bottom, you see that this squiggly line is the data uh, reconstructed Pacific Decadal Oscillation on the bottom. This gray curve is uh, various regimes or various shifts denoted by uh, jumps in the, in the gray line at the bottom. Along with the, the PD. V or PDO, there was, uh, at least recently, we've seen that sea level pressure in the North Pacific uh, has different states uh, for different states of the, uh, whether it's positive or negative. So the uh, mean sea level pressure, this is a change between 1977 to 88 and 56 to 76. I'll come back to this later. So let's look at some of the kinds of climate shifts that have occurred, uh, or if they've occurred, uh, changes in the statistics. This is 
representing ch changes in the statistics. And actually, one of the papers that we came across that mentioned the act exact phrase climate shifts was by Kucharski and Insik. Uh, so they are the actual experts, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, and I think Fred was actually mentioning this work as part of your, uh, the lab program here. But this one is showing the AM, AMV index observed from 1900 to 2010 in the upper left. And you see the strong multi-decadal variability. Uh, and on the right side, you can see the changes that go that, uh, in the ENSO, the magnitude of the ENSO variability, basically. So stronger ENSOs, as, uh, as Rowan was talking about during different phases of the AMV. So what are recent climate shifts that I was able to identify? Well, first there is 1976-7, and that was a shift in the mean. Uh, next one that we found was 1988-9, another shift in the mean. Uh, then there's the hiatus, 1998 to 2015, which is a, a shift in the trend. And there was also a change in the uh, NAO uh, AMV, what appears to be a sharp trend in that in 1990, a, a sharp change in that in 1995 and 6. So these are all very, um, very well documented. The, the 1976 climate shift, I think, was first also fortuitously the year that satellite observations began. Uh, this climate shift was identified, and people spent a lot of uh, effort to say it wasn't just the climate shift. I mean, it wasn't just the satellite data. It, it affected fish, for example, and things like that. So they couldn't, they couldn't have been affected by launching satellites, I guess. Uh, anyway, trend birth in 1990. Finally, I think he was the first one to identify this uh, 1976 climate shift. So that was after. 24 years, uh, recent observed interdecadal, interdecadal changes in the northern hemisphere. And what he found was basically this change in the, in the sea level pressure uh, in the Aleutians from uh, high to low in 19, 1977 to 86. Uh, sometime later, another 10 years or so later, Zhang, Wallace, and Battisti uh, found that there was a tropical connection to this um, multi-decadal variability. You can see their time series in the top panel with the ENSO variability removed, and the structure of the multi-decadal is shown in the bottom panel uh, with the change in the, uh, the lowering of sea level pressure in the Aleutians. Or this is this is an SST, so it's a lowering of SST in the uh, North Pacific and warming in the in the tropics with a somewhat wider uh, latitudinally wider structure than ENSO, which is in the uh, middle panel. Then also in 1997, Mantua et al. Uh, popularized the PDO, PDV, and their structure, now you can see also graphics dramatically got better in, in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> and you see the same picture, basically, that, that uh, from the Wallace paper um, and a time series of the, the PDV, which shows decadal variability in the upper left-hand side. So you, then you just, once you have this index, you can regress it on any field you want and get a pattern, and that's what this has shown. The SST and SLP regressed on the, on the PDO in the top panel here. Uh, then in 97 also, Minobe found that, you know, identified coherent changes in other indices like uh, SST pressure and so forth. With the PD, with the PDO, and uh, also there's the point of view that um, sometimes these shifts can, these changes can occur when different indices kind of vary 
by accident become in phase or out of phase, uh, and this is something related to that which is called uh, climate networks, and I understand people will be talking about this kind of phenomenon also. So this, this network is PDO, NAO, ENSO, and global mean temperature or something like that, and it seems it's a bit arbitrary to me, but the dashed lines are where 1920, 1940, 1980, where they said there's some kind of climate, climate shift from this network approach. So the summary of what happened with the PDV is it started, I think, as a climate shift, and then it went in the 90s, and then it became a decadal oscillation and multi-decadal variability. So I don't think people really think of PDV that much as climate shift anymore. What about 1988, 1989? Uh, was there a regime shift then? And this is again related to PDV mentioned in 2000 and fish abundance has changed and so forth. Uh, but seems to have been, at least from looking at the current time series, this index didn't change sign at that time. It sort of started to and then Looks like it decided to go the other way. Um, change in the global mean temperature trend, that's been mentioned already. Reduced trend, 1998 to present. It's gotten lots of press, huge number of explanations. Some of my old work was rediscovered by people uh, from the 90s. And, uh, but the data has been reevaluated, new correction applied. I think the conclusion might be, at least from, the, from the, that most recent paper, never mind. <laughs> that, and, but if you look at these pictures, the top panel shows both the, uh, or the bottom panel, say, with and without corrections. Uh, the actual curves are practically indistinguishable when they apply these new corrections due to uh, buoys. Uh, and it's just a matter, I think, that we haven't really gone long enough yet to see if there's a, a been a, a change in the trend. Maybe, maybe not. It's a question, this paper is a question of statistical significance, which is statistical significance doesn't mean it did or didn't happen. It just means we can't be that sure. Uh, and finally, the NAO, 1995 and 6 shift, I have a... You can see the NAO time series here, and where the black line is, to my eye, it looks like there was a shift in the <coughs> shift in the sign from positive before a long run of positive to a long run of, of negative, and primarily negative until the present. So that, that could be a, a climate shift. Um, question of, of whether it's now attribution and mechanism and so forth. Uh, in a paper in the 2003, while it was still thought in 2003 that this was a positive trend in the NAO, you can see actually the negative trend, the, ne the shift, if there was one, happened uh, seven years earlier. We still thought there was a positive trend, but we showed that uh, at least up till 1999, this, this kind of time series is consistent with just noise in the uh, in the atmospheric model. So, for conclusion, uh, my conclusion is that if we define climate shifts as rapid changes between distinct climate regimes to distinguish them from quasi-oscillatory climate variability on decadal to centennial timescales, we probably don't see much recently, although certainly there are very strong climate shifts in the observational record uh, at least the proxy record for, for paleoclimate. And it's difficult to find climate shifts this way in the recent record, but there are plenty of examples of what you might call regime change type shifts or changes in sign of, of uh, indices and so forth. Thanks. <laughs>